only three or four percent of disc herniations truly require surgery. Hey, it's Dr. Jerry, and I've been getting so many questions on Instagram that I decided to do a Q&A. I really appreciate all the support and all the interest in the IG page. Uh, one of the questions that I got was, who can see a chiropractor? And that's about just anyone with a spine. So we treat patients of all ages, all sizes, uh, from infants to adults. Now myself, in my practice, I don't see infants, I see kids and adults. So some of my colleagues in the office, for the babies, we bring them in, they'll take a look at them. Hey, that's a really good question and the answer to it, it depends. I do see a lot of pre and post operative patients, but we want them to be cleared by the surgeon for treatment. Generally, we start seeing patients for post-surgical rehab about four or five weeks after the surgery. Uh, it depends if they have had the clearance or not, then we start rehabbing them. Now, the type of treatment they may receive initially is very gentle. It may not be manipulative. It may be based more on rehabilitation. And then as we progress, we go forward. A lot of patients who've had prior back surgery uh, a while ago, sure, these are candidates for uh, manipulative services. I practice a type of treatment called flexion distraction technique, which works very well for post-operative patients. Hey, that's a really great question, and the simple answer to that is no, an MRI or x-ray is not required. In fact, sometimes uh, having an MRI or x-ray uh, can confuse the issue. However, if you have a report on an MRI or an X-ray or a CD or an MRI or an X-ray, bring them in with you most certainly. A lot of studies have shown this, that imaging, especially for lower back pain, isn't really helpful in the first four to six weeks of care. Sometimes when a patient has an MRI and it looks really good, they feel bad. And sometimes when they have an MRI and it looks really bad, they're okay. So there's no substitute for a clinical examination and a history, these are oftentimes about 80 to 85% of the diagnosis. Remember, the MRI, the picture, that's just confirmatory. Thanks for the question, that's a really good question and we do see a lot of second opinion patients here in the clinic. So, for a disc, please remember this, uh, only three or four percent of disc herniations truly require surgery. The three reasons a patient should have a surgical intervention on a disc is, number one, 10 out of 10 pain all of the time. They can't get out of pain. Number two is progressive or uh, serious neurological deficits, okay? Uh, severe weakness, trouble controlling the bladder or bowel, uh, intractable pain, these are other reasons. The last reason would be everything else fails. Usually, an adequate trial of conservative care is indicated, and that's six weeks of conservative treatment. Uh, really great question, thanks for asking that. So yeah, I do see a lot of sports-oriented patients. However, they are not the majority of my patients. My average patient is the average person in Dubai, uh, office worker, clerical worker, administrator, uh, laborer. We see all different types of patients from all walks of life. Uh, I do treat a lot of varying cases, everything from lower back pain to sports injuries. Awesome question, we love treating pregnant women all the time, and that's the point. You should come in prior to delivery. So we see antepartum before the delivery and postpartum females. 
specifically for after birth deliveries, well that depends on if they've had a C-section or not. So generally, about six weeks after a C-section, once they've been cleared with the OBGYN, uh, we go ahead and start some active rehab, start strengthening their core muscles and their pelvic floor. And as far as antepartum, before pregnancy, we see those right away, uh, from day one of conception all the way through birth. So we see headaches in the office and the real important thing is to diagnose the source of the headache. Anything from a tension headache to a true migraine headache. And based upon the history and examination, that'll let us discern whether or not we can help them. Thanks for watching those videos. Yeah, a lot of people like them uh, in regards to the functional short legs. So basically, here's the, the short answer. There are two types of leg length discrepancies, an anatomical or structural short leg and a functional short leg. Now, an anatomical short leg relates to the bones in either the femur or the tibia actually being short, usually due to a surgery or a, a long bone fracture. And the most common types of leg length discrepancies, these are called functional leg discrepancies. This often has to do with a problem in the pelvis or the feet. Another good question. So chiropractic treatment, it varies on the expectations and goals of each individual patient, okay? So generally patients come in for us for the most important issue, which is they're in pain. And then once they get out of pain, generally patients forget about that. But I tell patients this, okay? So once you're out of pain, that doesn't necessarily mean the problem is gone. Pain is sneaky. It's the last thing to show up. It's the first thing to go away. So you have to remember, tissue, tissue healing takes time and the recovery rates vary based upon age, health, and the type of injury. So just because you're in pain, or out of pain doesn't mean that you're all better. So yeah, I love seeing patients from uh, KSA and Kuwait and Bahrain. We see a lot of travelers who fly in for treatment. It's very common. They come in. What I would encourage you to do is call the clinic or email the clinic, set up the appointment time. Generally, I'll ask the patient to come in for an evaluation or evaluate the case uh, briefly over the phone with the girls, and then we'll tell you what you need to do. Great question, thanks for that. So cracking, it's known medically as uh, cavitation. That is just the pressure in the joint changing. It's caused by a, a fluid bubble that's in the joint. And a lot of patients, they become apprehensive. And certainly, if you're, you're afraid of that, that's something that we're gonna go ahead and tailor a treatment differently for you. So a lot of times, besides the manual types of treatments, we use instrumentation adjustment, which you aren't gonna hear any cavitation or any clicking or cracking. Okay, so numbness, tingling, or pain in the leg is likely a form of what's called sciatica. And a lot of times we have to qualify, is it the entire lower extremity? Does it go below the knee? Does it go into the calf? If it goes below into the calf or the foot, this most commonly is known as sciatica. Sciatica means leg pain, and generally it's coming from an irritation of the sciatic nerve, which is coming from a disc in your back. Hey, so that's pretty much it for the questions right now. Enjoyed it. If you do have questions, go ahead and send them in. When we get a chance, we'll address these in another Q&A. This was the first Q&A, and we'll look forward to doing more of them.